Welcome to this lecture on formal operational stage. This stage marks a dramatic shift in the way adolescents are able to process information. Let us watch some video clips and understand this shift from concrete operational to formal operational stage. This video marks a shift from the concrete operational stage to the formal operational stage. Initially, the child who was very young was not able to understand the concept of number one and many. The elder sister uses the concrete objects such as the sun, the moon and the stars. The child was not able to understand even then. The elder sister then used squirrels and butterflies moving around the boy to make him understand the concept of number one and many. Once mastered, the boy applies this concept to birds flying in the sky. Once the boy understood the concept of number one and many, the elder sister tells a story through which an abstract concept is taught to the child. We can watch this short clip from the video again to understand how the elder sister is able to shift the boy's thinking process from the concrete concept of number to abstract concept of unity. The boy in this third video clip shows the accomplishment of formal operational stage where the boy is able to understand the meaning of one not only as a number but also as signifying strength, togetherness and courage. These are the abstract concepts which children learn only once they reach a certain stage. So this is the movement from concrete operational to formal operational stage. The child in the formal operational stage can think in terms of abstractions and can handle ideas internally within his or her mind as compared to a child who is in the concrete operational stage and who is just able to handle ideas which can be seen out there in the form of concrete objects just as this child was able to understand the concept of number one and many by using things or objects tangible objects in the outside world whereas in the third clip the boy is able to give meaning to one in terms of abstractions or he is able to think of one as a quality of oneness togetherness strength and courage which very clearly demonstrates the abstract nature of formal operational thought Didi, main batao. Having watched the video clips, we now understand that formal operational stage involves thinking in abstractions rather than thinking through tangible or concrete objects. Coming to the overall meaning of formal operational stage once again, it involves a development of capacity for abstractions or thinking with the help of ideas rather than thinking with the help of concrete objects. So children at this stage or adolescents do not need tangible objects to perform operations just as a concrete operational child needs tangible objects to learn concepts such as addition and subtraction. A child in the formal operational stage is able to perform those operations mentally. Coming to the major characteristics of formal operational thought. Uh, the first important characteristic is hypothetical deductive reasoning. Hypothetical deductive reasoning is the, a kind of thinking which is performed when someone faced with a problem is able to think of all possible factors that could affect the outcome, even those not immediately suggested by the concrete features of the situation. This is followed by testing each and every possible factor to see if it works in the real situation or not. We all have done the hypothetical deductive method in class 
11 when we were doing methods in psychology. Hypothetical deductive reasoning is strictly followed in the experimental method which we use in psychology wherein we try to see the effect of independent variable on dependent variable while controlling all the other variables which might affect the dependent variables. So this ability to think about all the potential variables which might affect the R dependent variable and to be able to control them and to see the effect of just one independent variable, one or two independent variables on our dependent variable involves hypothetical deductive reasoning which is possible only once the child attains the formal operational stage of cognitive development. Another important characteristic of formal operational stage is that it involves propositional thought which means that adolescents can evaluate the logic of statements by reflecting on the statements themselves. They do not need to consider them against real world circumstances. Consider for example premise 1 which says that all girls are tall, premise 2 which says that x is tall and the conclusion x is a girl. Now children at the formal operational stage can examine these premises on the logic inherent in them or they can apply logic to these statements. They do not need to check these statements in the outside world whether they are correct or not. They can judge these statements within their minds and they can apply logic to say whether conclusion X is a girl is true or not. If the same problem is given to children in the concrete operational stage, they have tremendous difficulty. In fact, it is most probably impossible for them to arrive to say whether conclusion X is a girl is true or not. Formal operational egocentrism. This refers to a form of egocentrism present during formal operational stage which involves an inability to, to distinguish the abstract perspectives of self and other. We learned in um, sensory motor development that child is e egocentric which means that the child is not able to separate himself or herself and the surroundings. Here in the formal operational stage, adolescents are not able to separate their perspective from others perspective. This will get clearer as we move further with the next major characteristic of formal operational stage. We know that adolescents experience formal operational egocentrism which expresses itself in another major characteristic of this stage which is the imaginary audience or the belief in adolescents that they are the focus of everyone else's attention and concern. Adolescents have a tendency to imagine themselves as always on stage which makes them extremely self-conscious. This is the reason we find adolescents spending a lot of time in front of the mirror grooming themselves and trying to look as perfect as possible. Personal fable. This refers to adolescents' belief that they are special and unique. This leads them to conclude that others cannot possibly understand their thoughts and feelings. This also leads them to believe that they are far too strong for any kind of danger or harm. This cognitive distortion or error in thinking, as Piaget calls it, leads adolescents to in get involved into risk-taking behaviors such as rash driving, smoking or getting into drugs. Idealism and criticism. This is another major characteristic of formal operational thought. Adolescents at this age, because of their increased ability to process ideas, they tend to be idealistic in their opinions and views about the world. Adolescents usually think about their lives as very special, unique and different from others. This also leads them to be overcritical about others' lives. Decision making. Adolescents fall short of good decision making at this stage as compared to adults. This is largely because adolescents at this stage are primarily guided by impulse and emotions which hinders their ability to think logically and to apply their logic to decision making situations. Having covered the major characteristics of formal operational thought, let us now go to our overview slide. So let us take a stock of what all we have covered. Today, as you can see on the screen, we have covered the formal operational thought or the formal operational stage of cognitive development. 
So that's all for today's lecture. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.